Para is really great. What's Para? It's a type. Amita, Courtney, Izzy, Lincoln, can you turn your video on so we can see everybody on the screen? E A E. Melis, can you turn your? I just pull it on. And unfortunately, Mason, you and um, you know, we may have to have yours on mute because you all being so close together. That's why we get that. 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 Why we get that or just uh, speak off of one. I, I think it'll still make the feedback because their devices are together, I think. Well, if they turn on, if they close one iPad, it should shut off the Zoom. Sure, they shut off the they'll want to be back on to watch in a minute. Either way, and see Courtney, Lincoln, and Kimani, if you'll turn your screens on. It's oh, up no. like paragraph and so. Well, yeah, you can't do that. Because words on there have to be full words, not uh, like parts of words that mean. All right, I'm take my okay. off with my back. Oh, oh well, yeah. All right. Okay, so I'm going. I'm going to screen record. So I need to pull up a website. I mean a Chrome page. Okay, let me try to paste. What is that? <laughs> Paragraph. All right. So, Graham, I'm just going to let it record on the Zoom meeting because I, if I try to pull up a screen capture, it's not going to work because it's messing up. So, Graham, can you just cut this video piece out? If I, you know, from the YouTube video? Yeah. Of course. Okay. Well, All right. Can you All say right. it so I can you, so I can cut it out? Say again. Uh, hey, what you me to do? So after the Zoom lesson later, can you just pull out the video in iMovie and just have the pledge? Sure. Do you need me to screen record this? Yeah. Can you see? Got all it. People? No, no, no. I can just turn this like that. Anybody can screen record, but all the people in the grid. A P H. Got it. All right. You mean like gallery view? Yep. You need in gallery yeah. view. That's what mine is on. Okay, I just need another key. Okay, Kimani, turn off your screen, please. Okay, P A R P A R A V R A T. Huh? All right, let's. Go. We gotta go ahead. All right, Mr. P, I'm only able to see nine at a time. All right, I, we'll try to edit the video from today. Screen for that, right? P A R A. I, I'm screen recording as we speak. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to do the play. Everybody's got to say it too, okay? So we need your faces in the screen. Oh, I'm right, ready? I'm going to see one more time, then I'm going to stop and tell you. Okay. Look at your camera when you're saying so, you can, so that it will see you on the. Like, look at your camera. T A R A. All right, I ready. R. Hey, Connie. Yes. You really need to go do that. Do what? There's background and noise in your. I did say start it. Yeah. You said I was going to start. Well, what you said start. All right, we ready? All right. Here's the pledge for Mr. P's class at Meg's Academic Magnet. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Okay, now I'm going to put the screen on for today. And here it is. All right, I got it, Mr. P. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so we're going to pick up with where we were going to be yesterday and the pair deck um is up so we're going to move on by this because we're going to run out of time okay so here you are on here um if you'll please respond to one two three on there number one um what questions do you have about the volume activity that you're doing on nearpod this week. Number two, have you finished Matt, Moby Max, the math practice number one? And number three, did you finish, have you finished up your Ed Puzzle videos so far for the week? So number one, a question you have, or you can say none. Number two and three is a yes and no. screen capture who's at the lesson today. All right, Jayla, I will reach out to you about the surface area part. Okay. Um, that's the only question I see so far. Um, and if you have a question, um, as you go through, please just, um, text me and then I can FaceTime you to explain, or I can do it on text, either one. All right. Um, so here we are. So yesterday we were in the middle of drawing the different, um, sides to where they belong. Can you color code by, um, this time, like, actually color in the two faces that you can see to which two they belong to and then draw an arrow to the ones that are not visible. So for the sides that the faces that you can see, color them in with a color. And then for the ones you can't see, just draw an arrow to a point where they would be. And again, please remember if you have questions about your assignments, because before they were voluntary, they're not voluntary anymore. For these four weeks, it's now all required through all of Metro schools. So please let me know if you have questions, because I have to give you feedback. Whereas before I didn't have to, but now we have to give feedback, which means grade it. So if you have a question, please let me know. All right. So, um, Look at a couple here. So this one is saying that the red is uh, actually filled in and the red is also back behind there that's not visible. And then the side that's 20 by six is getting colored in green. And then the side that's 14 by six is on the bottom underneath. And then the eight by six is in the back that we can't see, right? Okay, so here's a question. Um, is this slide, I mean, is this, prism sitting on its base. No, its base is actually the triangle and it happens to be sitting on one of its, um, those are called lateral faces. Here's the definition of lateral face. A lateral face is a rectangle on a prism that comes up from the actual base of the prism. So it'd be the rectangle walls. We've been calling them walls. Their actual name is lateral face. All right. Uh, here's another one. 
um, that's saying the triangles there. And then you got your uh, 20 by six part, and then you got your um, parts that aren't seen. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Um, so now, if you will look at that and tell me what is the surface area, and if you will go ahead and send me your response, what is the actual surface area? This is our last day on surface area of prisms. So make sure if you have a question, because we're moving on to cones and then spheres. Like your mask. So again, we're going to have 14 times eight, right? Halved, but two of those, which is back to 14 times eight. And then we need 14 times six, 20 times six, and eight times six, and add all that together. So, Pramita, would you care to talk us through how you got your answer? Sure. Let me put it back off, off where it was. Sorry. All right, there you go. You can use your annotation if you'd like, but you don't have to. Okay. So, the first thing I did was the triangles. So, I did... 14 times eight, which is 112. And then I wrote that down on a piece of paper. And then I did, um, figured out this side, the um, amount for all the sides. And then I added them all together and got 364 square. Okay, and then when you add eight times six, 48, six times 20, which is 120, 14 times six, and then 14 times eight, all that together, you got 364 square feet. Um, Eli, can you tell us why it's in square feet, not cubic feet? Why is surface area in square feet instead of uh, cubic feet? Because it says ST. Say again? Because it says ST. Because it says feet, and it's also in square feet because its area and volume would be the cubic feet. So, yep, yeah, that's right. All right, next uh, slide. We're moving on past. All right, so yes or no? No, sorry. Draw, push your dot to which one it is. So one of those can be done, one of them cannot be done with what information we have. Of course, it can be done, but not with the information we have. So if you'll drag your dot to which of those two can be solved by the information. We're putting it to the one that we can or we can't do. That you can. Slide the dot to the one of those two that could be done. So one of, they can of course be done, but one of them can be done with just that information. One of them cannot be done without more information. 
Michaela, do you care to tell us which of those can be done with the information we have and why? Please. Um, really, the biggest way, really, I'm going to go really. Um, I think that we can do the volume. Um, that is correct. And the reason? Um, or, or, or give me this. Why can I not do the surface area with those pieces of information? What is missing that I still need? Um, well, we have to. Um, okay, let me ask you this question. Um, do I need this over here? If I'm doing surface area? And do I need this over here? Yeah. yeah, because I need those to be able to say, oh, um, this is the measure to go with this side. This measure goes with that 15 over there, right? And then this will also be the same over here that I need for the back part, correct? At the bottom, the bottom part underneath there. All right, so yeah, I would need the side measures of the triangle to get the surface area of those rectangles on the side. Um, what would be the common mistake a kid might make there? What would be the common mistake a kid might make there? Anybody know? They wouldn't realize that the slate height is needed. Correct. They would assume the perpendicular height of 11 goes with the slant height and it is not because the slant height would be more than the perpendicular side. All right, so then the surface area would be able to be done if, let me clear all the drawings. All right, the, the, the volume would be done by saying half of 13 times 11, um, and then multiply 15 high, and then what would you get for the volume? So what is the volume? If you'll just text me the volume on your slide. Oh, actually, it's a draw. You can just put it in the blank. All right, so I've got some of you saying 165 uh, square feet would be the volume. Um, would it be square feet or would it be cubic feet for volume? Cubic. 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 Um, so we've got a couple people that are also saying it's 1,072. 0.5 cubic feet. So it would be 15 times half of 13 times 11, right? Which would be, this number would be the reasonable number. All right, so yeah, okay, next. All right, so on here, you have a, our last um, prism that we're gonna do of triangle prisms. All right, so on it, you have a, a shark tank. And over here on the right, that's 100 feet tall. Up here, the triangle is 120 feet by a perpendicular height of 80. I do not have the slant height lengths of the triangle, but I don't need them for volume. So if you will draw on the slide, what is the volume? And I've, I've written out the steps so you can just follow the math, do the arithmetic part there. Again, be sure that you're doing this. And I appreciate it.
Okay, I'll give you about 15 more seconds and we'll show some of the answers. All right, here we have an answer that says that it is 480,000 cubic feet, meaning cubes. All right, here we've got another one that says 480,000. Another one that agrees. Again, you'd wanna be sure and put your measurement there with it. All right, um, Josie, do you care? I've got your, this is your slide. Do you mind to share? Actually, it's not your slide, this is your slide. Well, I think it is. Yeah. So when you multiply 400, 120 times 80, you there, uh, Josie? Uh, yeah. Okay. And when you multiply 120 times 80, you get 9,600. Okay. And then you have to div divide that by two. Correct. And then you get 4,800. And, then, and you then you multiply that by 100, which is the height. And then you get 480. What's the shortcut when you multiply by 100? What's the easy shortcut on that? You add two zeros to the number. Yeah, it just simply adds two more zeros, which makes 100 times more for the digits. Correct. All right, um, gonna finish this drawing up and then we will be finished for today. All right, now on the screen, will you please draw me what does the net to this tank look like? And then the last slide after this will be to find its surface area and that's it for today, okay? So two more slides, draw the net on your screen that matches this uh, triangular prism. And I'm kind of using this as your little assessment of understanding triangular prisms, volume, and surface area. If you're not able to send it to me on Pear Deck, I'll need you to do it on a markup and text it to me later. So I'm using this as your no. Feedback. I'm using this as your feedback opportunity assessment for understanding the volume and surface net area of a uh, tri triangular prism. So either send it to me on Pear Deck here, or you'll need to mark it up and text it to me. So reminder, it's a triangular prism, so it would have a total of five faces, a top and a bottom, and three lateral faces or rectangular walls. Your net should have two triangles and three rectangles in it. Okay, whoever signed in is dabbing tomato. That's funny, but next time put your actual name, please, on Pear Deck or put it in parentheses. That's Mellis, I'm pretty sure. Okay, just be sure you put your number or your initials with it so I know who you are. It was just because my other email wasn't working, so I had to use um, my Gmail. Oh, and it lets you in? Yeah. Okay. That's funny. All right, so again, if you haven't sent that slide, if you haven't drawn the slide yet, uh, please go ahead and do so. Melis, Angelo, Fallon, and Josiah, I don't think you've got your drawing finished. If you'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm gonna share a couple here. Um, would you agree that that net is a net that would work with that tank. And they've color coded it too. Do they have two triangles and three rectangles? Yeah, again, the three rectangles would represent the lateral faces or the walls. And again, the, the two triangles would be the matching top and base. 
And yes, uh, the fact that they have this other triangle attached down here to this other wall, and it could have been attached to either one of the other ends of walls, right? So what I'm saying is you could have had this triangle here drawn up here or down here. Could it be here? No, but it could be on the other two parts like here or here. And it would have to be where it would match up at the top. And I'm trying to think uh, visually if it's turned the other way. I think that's the right way. But yeah, okay. Um, what about this one? Okay, this one is saying that um, it's got two matching triangles and three walls, and that is correct. And the little sharky goes right in there. That is also correct. And let me see who wrote that. That's funny. Okay. Um, this wall and this wall don't seem to be the same width as this wall. And that would be correct because if you'll remember, this 120 feet here is going to be more than these two are going to be over here. These would be about, say, 100 ish. So they would make that would make this and this wall a little bit shorter than this sharky wall here. So that's right. Okay. And let me clear that one out. Let me pick another one here. All right, here we got a color code that's showing you where the um, faces belong, matched in with the other parts. All right, here we've got same thing, net matches. Uh, net matches there. Another net that matches there. What about this net? Yep, same as the others. All right, and the last um, slide for today is I need to know the surface area. So the pieces of information that you did not have a minute ago, you do now have. Uh, that we needed to know those lateral slant heights uh, and as you can see, we now know that this one is 100 and that this one is also 100, which makes this a square, right? So, of course, these aren't drawn to scale. It really wouldn't be a literal 100 for the simple fact that it looks like a rectangle, not a square, but we're going to pretend it is. Okay, so uh, on the screen, you can just fill in the blanks. Again, I've stepped you through the process.
All right, going to share a couple of responses. And here we have a response that is saying that if I take the two um, triangles and I would need half of that um, 120 times uh, 80, but then I need two of the triangles and that gives me a total of 960. 